chaotic cryptids it is the chupacabra back after a very long time yeah i know what the hell i filmed like one video and like six months turned into a year turned into like i think almost a year and a half um life has been hell but i'm not here to make excuses i'm here to say i am genuinely sorry i everything got away from me but i do want to say that i am back with a vengeance as you can see, things have obviously changed, but I this channel means a lot to me. Uh, everything that I do for the community and for you guys and all the connections that I've made, all the friends that I've made because of the channel, everything that I've been able to do, all of it means so much to me and I'm very excited to actually be able to get back and filming the fuck again. So as you can see, I'm back and yeah, clearly a lot of things are different. My background is different, the hair is still growing, I got some new tattoos. Uh, a lot can happen in a year, so essentially um, I'm in the process of moving, so the background is going to be slightly different. I know it's a little less punk because I don't have like the posters behind me, but hey, you make do with what you have. And also appreciate these sick ass like LED uh, neons that my girlfriend put up. Super sick. Uh, the whole place is decked out like hell and I absolutely loved it. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Today, I am here to tell you guys a little story. See, what I've been doing in this past year, where I've been so fucking busy, you know, have had no time for my, like, punk rock little siblings, uh, I've been doing shows with my band and recording music. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my band is called Chupacabra. That's with a K instead of a C. I know what you're thinking. It actually was not my idea. It was my bass player's idea. So, Turner, thank you for making me look bad by making it look like I named the fucking band after myself. Um, I didn't. It was his idea. We all liked it, so we are called Chupacabra now, and um, we played a show at Monstercade. Uh, it was, it's been easily like a couple months now. Uh, Monstercade, for those of you who don't know, is a fantastic like little bar, very like punk rock, goth, alternative themed. The place is fucking nuts. They got the best murals. There's a full on like artistic ass painting of a nude man on a bed on the fucking bathroom wall. Um, the place, it's always, place is always super decked out. The like stage has these like TV monitors with eyes on them. The place is a fucking trip. I love playing there. We played there twice already. Both times were great. The second show, the most recent one, I think was one of our best shows as far as both turnout and audience energy. Super, super great. But, um, so basically something happened to that show that just reminded me both of just like how you can have some real assholes that will cramp on your style and make the show like kind of sucky but also it reminded me of how great the culture of a punk show can be so let me talk about that so first things first i just got to say it was a fantastic show a uh, shout out to scoby and orphan riot for joining us on the stage that day two great bands i will tag both of them down below i'll also tag the venue itself uh, check it out if you're in the Winston-Salem area. It's just a cool little bar for you to go and chill and meet people and just have a good time. Um, and it was a great show. There were so many things. Definitely one of my favorite shows we've, we've ever played. Possibly my favorite, which just goes to show how great it was, you know, when you consider the fact that, yeah, some shitty shit did happen. But basically it was uh, three bands. It was Scobie, my band Chupacabra, and Orphan Riot in that order that night. Uh, great show, great bands. It was our first time ever seeing SCOBY live and meeting them. They're great people. We hope to do more shows with them in the future. But essentially, um, today's video and story is about mosh pit etiquette. Now, for those of you who have never tried it, moshing is, at least where I come from, where I live and the shows that I go to, it's a mainstay at those shows. Like the punk shows, there's always gonna be a mosh pit right in the middle, uh, in front of the stage. And it's a great, like, energetic way to just have a good time at a punk show. Um, and, and I know I'm gonna catch flack from at least some people for this. This is sort of like, there's an understood like code of conduct that's just sort of like accepted by anybody who joins in a mosh pit and is not a fucking asshole. Those are, you are not out to hurt people, you're, you're helping people up if they fall, you are helping people get out if they want out, and you're not fucking groping people. Very, very simple rules to follow. And someone's gonna say, oh, we're not about rules in punk rock. Fuck off and let me finish. Um, so basically how the night went was that 
Scobie went first. Um, and first time we ever saw them, totally blew me away. Their uh, originals were fantastic. They had some bomb ass covers. Uh, they covered Say It Ain't So by Weezer, which had everybody in the fucking bar singing. And then they finish, they get off the stage, we start setting up, and there was this guy there. Obviously not gonna disclose the name, partially because privacy, but also I just don't remember what his fucking name was. Uh, he and I had been talking since like the beginning of the night, and he was a nice dude. Uh, he, we, we bonded a lot over our like mutual love of punk rock, and he was excited to see the bands. Um, as the night progresses, and as my band gets up on stage, we start to do our thing, he gets progressively more and more drunk, um, we go up, do our thing, easily one of the most energetic and into it crowds that I've ever had with my band. Absolutely love them. I like hung out afterwards. I must have talked to everyone just because I was like, wow, all of you guys have been fantastic. I love interacting with the crowds. And we get off stage, finish up our thing. And a lot of our songs, people were moshing to them, including this dude. Um, and... He's like going nuts over us. He is loving our music, loving our vibe. He is like, every time he sees me, he's like, dude, you're fucking great, man. But I can clearly see this man is like very deep in his cups. It really hit the shit when Orphan Riot went on and did their thing. They were the last band. I don't know if any of you listen to Orphan Riot, very much mosh pit music. Like their stuff is energetic. I did a whole review on them. They're great. And they start playing and mosh pit immediately forms. And this dude is in it, but a, like a couple songs in, I begin to realize, okay, he is being weird. So instead of the typical like mosh pit sort of movements, what this guy is doing is he's essentially, he's raging bull. He's raging bullying people. Like he is like getting, like he's curving his back forward and he is headbutting people. And he's like, he's doing it with varying levels of like intensity. Um, he didn't knock anybody over, but the thing is, this guy's short, so he doesn't have a lot of gusto behind him. But the thing is, not only is he sort of moshing in a weird way, which people mosh in weird ways, there were people two-stepping, there were people just like jumping around and running and bumping into each other, but he's doing a couple things that are just not okay. He's, first of all, he is singling out the pit crew, which, quick vocabulary lesson, in a mosh pit, the pit crew are the people who are not in the mosh pit, but are standing in the crowd on the edges of the mosh pit, uh, if, and basically what they do is that if someone gets pushed out of the mosh pit and into the crowd, they will either push that person back in, keep the people in the mosh pit in the mosh pit and away from the crowd so they don't bump into people who don't want to be bumped into, but also they help people get out if people want to get out, and they also help people stand up if they can reach them. They follow the mosh pit code, but they're not in the pit themselves, either because they don't want to be or maybe they can't be. Uh, and so they help keep the mosh pit in and keep the people in it okay because sometimes it's difficult to tell, oh, this person wants out immediately. And so the mosh pit crew keep an eye on those of us who are in the mosh pit. Great group of people, fantastic to have them. If you are like a hardcore mosh pit crew person, you have my fucking respect. This dude is going for the pit crew. He is looking these people in the eyes and running towards them, even though there's an entire group of people who have been in the mosh pit all night. A lot of the people who were in the pit stayed in the pit for the whole show. He's purposely singling out the mosh pit crew. The second part, because of this dude's height and the way that he is moshing, if you can even call it that, with a lot of the girls that were there and you know people who have breasts, he is at awkward breast height. He is at that height that if he goes for a person who has breasts, he's going to headbutt them in the boob area. Not okay. And he is just like, it gets to the point where I'm like, ah, oh, okay. I, I don't know if it's because I talked to this guy earlier or he really likes my band. I feel like I should keep an eye on him specifically. So I get out and basically spend most of Orphan Riot's like first half of their set, basically grabbing this guy by the shoulders and slinging him back into the pit whenever he gets out. And he just gets more and more out of hand as the show goes on. It got to the point where actually the vocalist of SCOBY was on the edge. Um, she wasn't, I don't know if she was necessarily in the pit crew or she, if she was just close to the stage. It got to the point where he fully like ran backwards, full body slammed into her and both of them fell into a nearby chair. 
and it got to the point where I was like, okay, he needs to go. And one of the people that was in the pit full on, like one of the guys that was in the pit the whole time with me, because I was in the pit for like as long as I could be before I realized this dude was being a problem, just tapped me on the shoulder was like, yeah, let's get this guy out of here. And so like, it starts with just me and one other guy just sort of grab this guy by the shoulders and without even like necessarily talking to him because you can't deal with drunk people, we fully turn him around and escort him through the crowd. The crowd fully parts because they've all been seeing what this guy's been doing and let us through. And as we're about like halfway between the stage and the door, because this is a, this is a small venue, it's not very big. Um, I look behind me and pretty much everyone who is in the pit is following us, helping us escort this dude out. So clearly it was one of those things where like everyone individually agrees he needs to go. And as soon as someone does something, everyone is on board. And it was thankfully easier than it could have been. Um, the most aggression we got out of the guy was like, uh, he like turns around and he was like, oh, I don't like that you all are following me. It's fucking weird, dude. It's fucking weird. Your generation's a bunch of pussies. We used to have like a good time. But yeah, whatever. I'm done having fun. I'm done having fun. I'm going to go home. Like that weird turnaround thing where like, okay, I'm not going to let you guys put me in my place. I'm going to decide that I want to go home. Um, even the bartender had enough of this guy. It was like, um, he, he like turned around. He's like, wait a minute, I want to go close up my bar tab. He's like, okay, dude, you can go close up your bar tab and then you're leaving. Uh, and we go with him to the bar and the bartender was like, oh, you're, you're done. You're you're already closed out. So either he closed it out and didn't remember or the bartender fully cut him off. I'm willing to, I'm willing to believe the bartender cut him off at that point because this dude was, uh, and also may I also add, and this is not necessarily a, a bad thing because it's just something that happens. Of all the people in the mosh pit, he was the sweatiest out of anybody. This dude just sweats so much. And if you don't want to be in the mosh pit, if a guy that is drenched in sweat collides with you on purpose, that's not a good time. So we got him out of there quickly. And that was really the only black mark of that show. And just, yeah, that all, everything that he did after he got to a certain point of drunkenness was just wrong. I don't know what this dude's personality is like when he's not drunk, but it doesn't fucking matter. If you're acting like that, you gotta go. And so, yeah, it was shitty, but also the how quickly everyone in the pit responded, that is what reminded me of just like, wow, we have a great culture. Like, there's gonna be, we've had good luck. My band, me and my friends going to shows, we've had pretty good luck. In the past year, we've had, I would say, only two bad experiences in mosh pits. And we've been in a lot of shows. We've played a lot of shows and I've gone to a lot of shows with my friends. So I would consider myself very grateful and very lucky that those are the only like bad experiences that we've had. That was the first one. And the most recent one was at Howard Station when I saw Babe Haven. That one I didn't really talk about because first of all, it was dealt with very quickly. Like the guy that was crowd killing and he, he was like throwing, he was throwing fists and elbows, clocking people in the face and telling them to fucking get over it. I took like a good, I don't know if it was a shoulder or a punch, but right in the fucking cheekbone, uh, got like, sort of staggered off my feet and just kept going. But that one wasn't as eventful for me personally because I didn't do the taking this guy out, someone else did. Uh, but this first dude, the one I just talked about, that was just sort of like the reminder for me in that moment of like, wow, we have a good show culture going on. Like, yeah, there are assholes that will make their way in, but there's also a good amount of people that will do their job to get these people out. So that's also true. So. Aside from this dude, great show. We met some great people. We like made connections. We met people who were in other bands, uh, who weren't there to play, but were there to see us. Uh, we once again uh, played an awesome show at Monstercade. I definitely will go back there as many times as I can. They are great. The person who does their booking is great. The staff is great. They're always excited to see like and hear us. Uh, and I just want to bring more bands there because it's just a great place to to set up a punk show. So, but that's the uh, basic essence of the story. And just a reminder to everyone, if you're moshing, pay your dues, keep your eyes out for assholes, treat people, it's, it's weird to say treat people with courtesy because you're in a fucking mosh pit, but still there is courtesy to be had in a mosh pit. Like there's this stupid ass like boomer 
mentality, or it might even be, like just older people who are either in the movement or who took part of it, who are like, oh, my generation had safe, had mosh pits, your generation had safe spaces, we're not the same. A mosh pit should be a safe space for moshing. You don't go into a mosh pit expecting to come out with broken teeth. You go into a mosh pit for some energetic fun. So if your idea of going into a mosh pit is we are going to beat the shit out of each other, you need to leave. That's the basic premise of it. And don't get sad if you get called out and kicked out. Punk shows are meant to be a space where you can share your love for punk music with the person beside you in a very energetic way, whether you want to mosh or not. So that's just how it's got to be. And to that guy, I hope that you are just like a good person when you're not drunk. And I hope that you can be a better mosher in the future so you can enjoy the space that we all enjoy. I don't like having to kick people out of having fun at a punk show. So, you know, sometimes it's got to be like that. And that's my story. <laughs> and that is it for today's video. Same drill as always, usual suspects. Um, obviously, like if you liked what you saw, don't be afraid to subscribe and uh, turn on that bell so that you know the next time that I upload, which will be next week. I have so many ideas that I have been writing down and I am super excited to get back like to the grind of making videos. Um, oh, and some exciting news. My band released a new song. Uh, it's called Eat Your Parents, and it is on all of the streaming services that you can find my band on. Uh, we are very excited, it was super fun. We recorded this with this dude, Brendan, of Clawed Out Tracks um, from up in, in Boone. He is, uh, he's the guy that did Babe Haven's newest album. He's absolutely fantastic at what he does. It was a super awesome like couple of days of recording the song. If you guys want, I'll even do like a video sort of talking about what we did throughout those two days. But the song came out fantastic and I'm very excited about it. It is one, probably my favorite song that we've ever written. So check it out and tell me what you think. I will be tagging uh, Scobie, Orphan Riot, and Monstercade Bar in the description. So check all those places out. And in the meantime, until next week, I will see you on the fucking flip side. It's good to be back.